Hi guys, welcome. If you're new here, my name's Nikki. I'm a beekeeper and I make beekeeping videos. If that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. If you're one of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and listening to what I have to say. I really, really appreciate it. Um, today I'm gonna be doing something um, that's a little different than my normal content and do a response or reaction type video to a little bit of controversy that has come up recently in the beekeeping community. Now, everything I talk about in this video is going to be my own personal opinions. Um, I do not know any of the people that I'm going to be discussing personally. So it's just going to be my thoughts on this. And hopefully I can get some of your thoughts and opinions on this issue as well. Now, this video is going to be centered around a female beekeeper named Erica Thompson. She is a professional beekeeper out of, I believe it's Austin, Texas, and her and her husband um, have an organization called Texas Bee Works. Now that organization, um, again, are professional beekeepers. They um, do hive removals, swarm removals. They have a massive social media presence and a YouTube channel as well. At the time of filming this video, I believe they have over 6 million followers on TikTok. They have a substantially lower amount of YouTube followers. And I will talk about why I think that is a little bit later in the video. Now, one of the positive things about Texas Bee Works is they are probably one of the most, if not most prolific advocates for honeybee conservation um, out there currently. Uh, they are recognized worldwide. And again, their videos have hundreds of millions of views. Now the videos that Texas Bee Works creates are typically videos of uh, Mrs. Thompson doing hive removals and swarm removals and sort of the premise of all of the videos is that to show how gentle and docile that honeybees are and how uh, kind of easy and flawless that these removals are. Um, in most of the videos, uh, Ms. Thompson does not have any uh, protective equipment on. She doesn't wear a veil or gloves and there are very few tools that you're going to find in the videos. So that is the basic premise around um, her videos. Now, there has been a female beekeeper recently, LA Honeybee Rescue, who has come out. She made a TikTok video in response to some of Texas Bee Works videos and sort of called them out for being a misrepresentation of beekeeping um, to being unsafe and promoting um, beekeeping without protective equipment. And there are a lot of things in that video uh, that LA Honey Bee Rescue made that I agree with. It's me saying what she's doing, going and opening up hives with her hair down, wearing dark clothes, with exposed skin is dangerous. People don't understand that you can't just look at a bee and know it's Africanized or not Africanized just by the color it is or by what it looks like. You can only tell by actually antagonizing the bees. And she doesn't show herself wearing protective gear when she goes up and, and analyzes the hive at first. She shows herself actually removing comb, which her husband has pre-cut for her very courteously. Like, I don't see her using power tools. I don't see her using ladders. Her husband goes in, cuts everything up for her. She lifts it up. She, she I only see her very carefully picking up comb. Um, yeah, when she handles storms, if this were... I'm 100% okay with her showing how docile swarms are but the fact is that she goes into removals without wearing any safety gear wearing black leggings a black tank top and a, like a dark blue shirt that's unbuttoned over top and like knotted and she's setting a very dangerous precedent she's not wearing any kind of power gear she's not wearing you know uh thick pants or gaiters or you know work boots she looks really pretty doing it and that's because it's faked and I hate to say that because y'all are going to say I'm coming for her, but it's not. Like, the reason I keep my hair short is so bees don't get caught in it. If bees get caught in your hair, they sting. Every female beekeeper I know, they either cut their hair off or they put it in a ponytail like and scrape it into a bun so that bees don't get tangled in their hair and sting them on the neck. So, or face. Um, I know what I know. 
So yeah, you guys can say I have a bad attitude all you want. You can come in the comments and like bitch at me and say that I've, you know, I shouldn't be coming after other women and I'm not supporting her or whatnot. No, I'm straight up calling her out and saying what you do is fake at Texas V Works. I see you. We all see you. All of us female removal specialists. We see you. We know you're faking. Now, there are many, many beekeepers who have come out over time and made statements uh, similar to this about Texas Bee Works, but this uh, female beekeeper is kind of gaining the most traction or getting the most publicity. This actually made national news um, as being controversial. And in my opinion, I think it pits uh, women against women or is portraying um, kind of cattiness or pettiness um, amongst women um, and there are people that support both sides of this so I just want to say there are male beekeepers who have come out and made statements um, that are very similar to LA Honey Bee Rescue about Texas Bee Works but none of them are really getting the exposure or the backlash that LA Honey Bee Rescue is getting and I don't honestly feel that she deserves the negativity that she's getting. So what I want to do is kind of just take a really quick look at some of Texas Bee Works uh, videos and kind of analyze some of the issues I have with these videos and whether or not I agree with LA Honey Bee Rescue's um, kind of interpretation or analysis of Texas Bee Works content. So this first uh, video that I want to talk about is Texas Bee Works latest video on their TikTok account. A swarm of bees settled under this umbrella and I was called to remove them. So I started scooping bees off the umbrella and putting them into a hive. When bees are in swarms like this, it means they're looking for a new place to live. They tend to be very docile since they don't have any resources to defend. They don't have a hive, food, or baby bees to protect, but they should have a queen. So with every handful of bees I scooped, I spent time searching for the queen. I repeated this process over and over again. By the time I removed most of the bees, I still had not seen the queen, and I realized this was an unusual case of a queenless swarm. This colony would not survive without a queen, but luckily I had an extra one on me I could give them. As soon as I gave the queen to the colony, they rushed to meet her. If they didn't accept her, they would try to kill her. If they did accept her, they would release her from the box by chewing through the piece of candy that stops up one end. As soon as the bees in the hive met the new queen, they began sending signals to the other bees telling them to move off the umbrella and into the box. So I just waited in the swarm of bees as the colony moved into their new home. After about 15 minutes, most of the bees were with their colony. So I checked on the queen and saw that the bees were starting to accept her. I waited a while longer for the bees to get in their new hive, then I loaded them into my truck and drove home. I put the bees in my apiary so they could continue the important work they do in a place that's safer for them and for people. And in this video, you see Mrs. Thompson. She does not have any protective equipment on. Uh, she does not have a veil. She does not have any equipment with her. She doesn't have uh, sugar syrup. She doesn't have anything. Uh, it's just her under an umbrella with a swarm of bees. Now, I don't really have a lot of issue with portraying uh, swarms as docile because they usually are. They don't have a hive to defend. They don't have eggs, uh, brood, honey to, to defend. So they really typically are docile. And it is reasonable to think that you could go in and do a swarm removal without a veil and without gloves. Um, so that's not my biggest issue with this video. So in the video, she uh, removes the swarm with her hands, uh, which seems to be kind of a growing trend on TikTok. People wanting to see beekeepers touching the bees with their hands. Um, so that's what she's doing. And she's scooping them in handful by handful into the hive. Now you'll notice in the video, there are not a lot of bees uh, flying around and that sometimes happens, but it's pretty evident to me that these bees probably have been sprayed down with some sugar syrup before this video was shot, uh, which is why you're not seeing a lot of bees uh, flying around. And then in the process of uh, bringing these bees into this hive, she has recognized that there's no queen. This is a queenless swarm. And it just so happens that she has a queen in her pocket. Uh, so she's able to take that queen cage and queen out of her pocket and give it to the bees and it's a happy ending for the bees. So this is just not realistic. As beekeepers, we are not riding around with queen bees in our pocket, in our cars. 
On top of that, um, it's really difficult for me to believe that she did the swarm removal and spent the time that she did. And at no time during this process did any of the bees recognize the queen's pheromone that was sitting in her pocket the whole time. Uh, so this video is clearly staged. Um, it's likely that she knew this was a queenless swarm going into it and brought the queen, um, but we're not seeing any of that. We have no context for this video. Uh, so this, that video to me is really a very staged video and not an ac accurate representation of what's gonna happen at a swarm removal. Now the next video that we're gonna look at is a hive removal, not a swarm, an actual existing hive from a shed. Bees had been living in this backyard shed for at least two years. The landlord wanted to call an exterminator, but the family who lived here wanted to save the bees, so they called me. When I lifted up the floor, I found a huge hive full of gentle bees. The hive was so big, I had to remove another section of floor to access the entire thing. Then I started removing the hive. Whatever I removed from the original hive went right into the new one so the bees would have everything they need to survive. After I removed all of the comb, I started scooping bees into the new hive. As soon as I put the bees by the new hive, they marched right in. Then a stream of bees began running out from under the floor into the new hive. So I waited and watched to see if I could spot the queen bee in the crowd. After about 15 minutes, she appeared, so I put her in a clip to keep her safe. Once the queen was in the new hive, some bees began sending signals to help the other bees find their way home. I left the hive overnight, and by the next day, the entire colony was in their new home, and it was another great day of saving the bees. So if you notice, this video started out, um, Miss Thompson has no tools. She doesn't even have, at a minimum, a hive tool with her. It's just her and a smoker. She's, again, not wearing protective equipment. Her hair is down. Um, she, the video starts with her just raising up the floor and exposing this hive, and they're just so gentle and such nice docile honeybees and she can gingerly you know lift this comb out uh, and put it into the box and the bees just march their way in video is also not an accurate representation of a hive removal it is evident that somebody has gone in and did a cutout so they have cut that floor ahead of her um, none of that is shown so you're gonna have power tools and likely the person doing that is going to be suited up because that does agitate the bees um, so again, just another inaccurate representation of what a hive removal looks like. Now, I do hive removals and um, they're in Texas, mind you, so it is hot in Texas. It gets hot in Ohio, but a lot of times it is hotter in Texas. So going in to do a hive removal, even in the spring in Ohio, it is hot. Um, I am not going to do a hive removal without a suit on, um, ever. I'm just not going to do that. You don't know these bees. Bees are unpredictable. So, um, you know, I'm not going in with no protective equipment to do a hive removal. But even then, you are hot and sweaty and it's not pretty and there is no full face of makeup as a woman. And I'm telling you this as, as a my perspective as a female beekeeper, it is not attractive to do a hive removal. It's physically a lot of work. Um, you sweat in unmentionable places and there are times when I will literally have sweat dripping down through my veil and onto the hive uh, because it is that um, labor intensive to do a hive removal. So there's never a time, easy, even in the easiest of removals, that you would see me just gingerly sitting there and, and taking out this comb. This is just not realistic. I think one of the important things that we have to remember in beekeeping is that you do have to show uh, the safety side of beekeeping because yes honeybees are gentle and yes honeybees are docile and beekeeping is amazing and it is interesting and it's relaxing and it's all these other things um, but honeybees can be dangerous you can encounter Africanized hives you can get stung and have a severe reaction from a honeybee and you don't have to be allergic for that to happen so there are many many beekeepers who have had stings uh, throughout their beekeeping career and then had a one sting and that specific sting is different and now they're in the hospital and having a severe up to anaphylactic reaction to that honeybee sting. So it's absolutely critical 
for me that people see that other side of beekeeping and that when they're getting into beekeeping that they know how to do it in a safe way and they know how to take precautions and they know how to be prepared uh, in the event that something negative happens because honey bees you know can um, hurt people and can kill people and I don't say that to deter anybody from starting in beekeeping or continuing in beekeeping but I say that because it's just a fact um, and it's a fact that we just can't ignore so I'm all for advocacy and I'm all for awareness but we have to have something that encompasses all aspects of beekeeping and not just glorifying the wonderful things about it so those are just a couple examples of issues that I have with the videos um, and Texas Bee Works. And I think the biggest issue for me is that there is no context to these videos. They do not ever show all of the prep work that goes into this. So I 100% agree with LA Honey Bee Rescue on that. There's never the prep work. You don't ever see them in protective equipment. You don't ever see all of the steps that leading up to when that camera starts. And there are a lot of them. Um, not only are they not showing it, uh, they're not talking about it. So they're not uh, putting any disclaimers out. They're not putting any warnings on their video. So it's realistic to think that people could watch these videos and really think it is that easy to go in and do a hive removal. Now one of the things I do disagree with, um, with LA Honey Bee Rescue a little bit, is she does point out um, that Texas Bee Works, that Erica does wear dark clothing, and I don't have an issue with her clothing. I will never talk about the clothing that another woman wears. I think you should wear what you're comfortable in, and there's nothing, in my opinion, wrong with anything that she wears. Yes, there are people who think that beekeeping should only be done in light colored clothing, and I would dispute that a little bit. I think I, I've gotten in my hives many times with dark jeans on or dark shirts um, and not really had any issues. Every hive is different though, so there are going to be times when maybe the light colored clothing is more appropriate for a hive. But I think in, and to say in general that you have to wear light clo colored clothing every time you're doing um, that every time you're working with bees is just not appropriate in my opinion. So I am not going to comment on uh, Miss Thompson's physical appearance or on her clothing. And if I see any comments about that in the comment section, I will just delete those because we're not going to uh, shame women for what they wear um, at all here on this channel. There are beekeepers who are coming to her defense and saying that protective equipment is not required in beekeeping, but it is a personal preference. And I agree with that as well. Um, I think though in the kind of age of social media and if you're creating content that is designed to be educational um, and instructional, really should be at a minimum putting disclaimers on her content uh, that she would recommend that other people wear it or putting a disclaimer that everything that she's doing is for entertainment purposes only uh, because her videos are entertaining and I think that's why she has such a massive um, internet following. Now. I mentioned before about how the discrepancies between or the disparity between the amount of subscribers she has on TikTok versus the amount of subscribers she has on YouTube. And I think she has around 45,000 on YouTube versus the 6 million on TikTok. And that is because if your entire premise is to get film yourself beekeeping, touching the bees and not um, have having uh, PPE on, it is much more difficult to capture a 20 minute video of that versus a one minute TikTok. So in my opinion, yes, I think her videos are staged. I think she's wanting to portray a certain image. And I think those platforms give her the ideal amount of time that she can do that in. And she's having far less opportunities to capture herself um, without protective equipment in hives to be able to stretch those out into 10 to 20 minute videos. So I do think that's why she has a lot more following on Instagram and on TikTok versus on this platform. Now I may get a little bit or a lot of backlash for making this video, but this is my opinion. And overall, I agree with the majority of things that LA Honey Bee Rescue has to say. These videos look extremely staged to me um, and they appear to be kind of glamorizing beekeeping. Um, 
But again, as I said before, that's okay for content creation, but let's just be honest about the fact that your videos are there for entertainment and aren't really an accurate representation of what beekeeping is like. I'm curious to know uh, what you guys' opinion is on this topic, how you feel about it or what your thoughts are. So please leave that information down in the comment section below and let's discuss it. Um, if you uh, agreed with things I had to say or you found this video helpful, please give this video a like. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.